You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, from the AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and Bing.com, and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's American Horror Story After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. If you'd like to buzz in on tonight's show, you can buzz us at 424 256 1729. That's 424. 424- 256-1729. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's After Buzz TV's American Horror Story After Show. Hello, After Buzz TV Nation. We all know that Bing is for doing, and we are doing the After Buzz for American Horror Story Asylum Season 2, Episode 13, the finale. It all ends here. The title, Madness Ends. All right. Now, we've got a blast from the past here, folks. We've got someone that's... You are a sight for sore eyes. I'm JC, of course, but across the table, we've been waiting for you for weeks, ladies and gentlemen, Miss Jackie Borowski. Hi. I feel like, um, I feel like I came back like the little girl in American Horror Story never did come back, which is what I was expecting to happen. Lots of characters didn't return that I expected would return. And there she is. She's, bringing the, she's already bringing <laughs> already the truth. Starting sassy. She, sassy Jackie. Everyone, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. And of course, who do we got running? The, who's engineering tonight? Martin is. Oh. As I talk in the third person. Nice. We like that. We yeah. like that here. And also, we after Buzz fans, we've also got Steven on the line in a few minutes because he couldn't make it tonight, but he's got so much opinion. I as think we, he's already on the line, JC. It, well, do you want him? To, do you want to cut him in? Why not? Okay. Steven, talk. Hey, how's it going, guys? Steven, does your face hurt? It, it, hurt, it hurts quite an, an amountable sum, yes. <laughs> Do you feel like kind of like bloody face? Is it all really puffy right now? For, for those that uh, don't Steven, know, are you wearing other you people's skin on your face? Mask. For those that don't know, uh, Stephen couldn't make it tonight. He had his wisdom teeth pulled out, but he's a trooper, and he's still calling in. So, Stephen, awesome to have you tonight, buddy. It's the finale. How could I not? Absolutely. So, guys, imp- well, before we start off, if you guys are watching us on AfterBuzzTV.com, chat roll, watch our base, Boy Marvel, hello. If not, if you're not watching us live, make sure to tune in on iTunes or YouTube and comment, subscribe, let us know what you think because we actually do follow your comments and maybe we'll bring some of your suggestions into season three. But first, overall impressions of the show, the season. Jackie, go. I feel I feel that this was the best episode of the season. And I think it was because it was the most succinct and it tied everything together. There were moments during the whole season that I felt like I was watching the third Matrix movie where, you know, you're like, oh, my mind is being toyed with and I don't even know why. And um, I think... I think I like the season now that I've got to the end of it. There were certain there were certain episodes that were definitely my favorite. The Anne Frank arc was definitely one of my favorite arcs. But there were points where I'm just like, what are they doing and where are they going with this? I think there's a reason why you liked Frank, uh, Anne Frank's episode so much. It was directed by, uh, I believe it's Alonzo Gomez Rejon. Who directed the last episode. Exactly. And yes. also Spilt Milk. Yes. Which was, I thought, which was an, another great episode. And there's good news. It was good, but it creeped me out so much because of the, like, severe mommy issues that I was like, ooh, ooh. But I'm going by the fact how it was shot. Like you said, it was succinct. Oh, it was well done. Very well yes. done. You, you noticed when he when he did he did Diary of Anne Frank Part 2, mm-hmm. Spilt Milk, and the finale. And good news for After Buzz, I mean, American Horror Story fans. If you like, if you like that his style, well, he's actually going to be directing most of the episodes of Season 3, actually. And he's also producing part of the, of the series. He works closely with Ryan Murphy. He's worked on Glee. Right. And he was actually, I looked it up, he was the second, he was like the second unit director for Argo. Yeah. So he's like, he's an up and coming guy. And I think people are starting to get wind of his directing style, which is really good. And I also like the writer of this last one. He wrote for Angel and Dollhouse. Okay. And I'm a huge Joss Whedon fan. So anybody who has worked with Joss is like 
pretty much going to be just hands down good in my book. See, so we kind of giving it the seal of approval, but I'm looking at like even Boy Marble. He says because I didn't get it, and I think Stephen might have a different opinion. What'd you think, Stephen? Glad to hear it. Well, I I liked how they tied together Jude's story arc. I liked that whole thing. I liked the uh, I liked the Lana story arc, even though I didn't like the ending of it. I thought it could have ended more strong, but. I was still throughout the whole series, throughout the whole season, and towards the end, I did not like the alien story arc, and I did not like how they finished out Kit's story arc. Bringing Alma back at the end of the two episodes ago, then having like the kids and everything. I mean, they kind of just ended that with one line saying the kids in New York surge, and the other one's like a politician or something. I mean, it just wasn't very satisfying for the end of Kit's arc. I feel like I was I was reading online, I was reading a lot of articles, and I agree with this. The alien storyline, no bueno. Like, most people do not like the alien storyline, and here's why I think that's—I I, here's why I think that they don't like it, is because— Instead, you with a storyline that has aliens, you either have to be blatant about them or you have to be vague. There were too many points throughout the series where they would show like the alien head, like she was drawing the alien heads. They were sh showing alien hands. Mm -hmm. You see Sister Jude see an alien at one point, but then there are sometimes like when the girls are actually abducted, you don't really see the aliens. So they were being purposely vague at some points and then purposefully showing the aliens at others. And I think that a lot of people were confused and they didn't know what to make of it. Either, either you make that decision to not show them at all and that way you stick in your own impressions or you blatantly say, okay, Kit's been abducted, he goes up and there's a big alien god waiting for him. Okay, you know, I agree, but let me add two things on top of that. With the aliens, I think that was Ryan Murphy's point they were not meant to be understood. Mm -hmm. And I, it's a slight cop-out because honestly, without the alien storyline to Kit's story, what point, I mean, there's not a lot of story to Kit. Because honestly- Exactly, what, that, it's, it, it just kind of kills a story to have it based so strongly on the aliens than not to have any kind of finish to it. Well, I mean, what was kind of interesting is maybe the aliens were, I don't know, like you, keep, you can't have to just speculate on anything, but it's it's interesting how Alma killing Grace and leading her back to Briarcliff is what led Kit back to Sister Jude to say to be the salvation of Sister Jude in the end. That was kind of an interesting twist plot because if Alma hadn't um, killed Grace, Kit would have never found Sister Jude. That's true. That's, That's true. To help it all tie in. Yeah, I, I mean, I I agree that it's like I think that is pointing to the the how the. I, I want to say well writing this, but that's not even a phrase. Like that's the only thing that's coming to my head. It goes with this season because some some most people have questioned the writing of this season. Like this, but this episode they they tried to. You could see where there was like a desperate attempt to try and like lock everything in, and I think that was one of them. It's like okay, we have to we have to lock up these two stories, and what's the best way to do that? Well, I did it. I mean, I know everyone is so mad, but it. it I, I don't know. I think he justified everything he did. Honestly, sure, it wasn't as well done as season one. I know we always we always go back to season one, and I think season two was different tonally, uh, completely different. But I think by season three, I think he'll he'll get back, he'll find uh, like a sweet spot in between season one and two to balance it out. There'll be more romance. There was really wasn't as much romance this season as the first. Right. But I th I think he hit it on. I, this was if there was a, a place to complain this will be it because the rest is fantastic and starting with especially Lana Yes, let's start with Lana because they uh, We start with a flashback and right. she's basically uber famous Barbara Walters type and she's going back and um I guess basically like editing, editing her personal story for an interview because she's now filling in the parts that she had previously left out. And they mm -hmm. do a lot of, um, I liked this, they did a lot of like Titicut Follies, um, which was a documentary about uh, an asylum in Massachusetts. They film it and um, intentionally, I'm assuming, because mm -hmm. it's, it looks pretty similar, they are intentionally filming it to look like that. And so um, she basically does like an expose that she promised Kid that she would do. There's a few of those actually. Um, I believe Southern, si Southern Siren might have sent me that one that you were talking about. Mm -hmm. But there was one that I found by Geraldo of all people. Oh. 
Oh, Rob, that's interesting. He did an expose of, in, gosh, I think it was called West Westmore. Mm -hmm. That was the name of the home, Westmore. And it's almost, it's eerily similar to Bri Briarcliff. And he did the same stand-up that Lana did. Very similar. And he's walking nice. in and, and you see the patients and some are nude. And it seem, it's very like what Lana sees in Briarcliff. Right. It's almost to the point. So I, I saw the parallels. But did you notice here, I don't know if I'm getting ahead of myself, but... Of course, Ryan Murphy said there was going to be tons of clues for season three. Right. And did you notice the room that they were being, that Lana was being interviewed in? It is actually the red room from the White House. See? Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm from D.C. originally, so I that's what I was thinking. They said they're going to do it in three cities, and she's basically set up like a Barbara Walters type. She's getting a Kennedy Center honors, and then the room is set up like the red room. Exactly. So. I was going to tweet it out. Actually, I have the link for it. The room matches the red room to a T. Nice. So see, I so love it. that's I a love great it. clue for season three because I, I I'm thinking it's going to take New York, D.C. and New Orleans is what I'm thinking. I I don't know. We'll get into that a little bit later because I haven't heard. Do you have any thoughts on season three? Um, clue? can can we do that as our as we move along as our wrap up? Because I I don't want to. I, I think I don't want to like give away the. Yeah. Big finale. Okay, all right. So, finale. Steven, so what did you think about Lana's story? Did they tie it up for your liking? You know, what did you feel? Um. You know, I I will say that one of my major complaints last uh, last uh, after show was talking about how they didn't give John Threadson, you know, his son. They didn't give him really much beef to his story. They didn't give him much of a backstory. They kind of filled in a little bit this episode, which was nice. They gave it a little bit more believable to who he was and like him seeing Lana that time, turning him into like wondering who she is. They they put the pieces together in that respect, and I actually did like that with. Uh, with how they finished out Lana's character, you know, I, I that was probably the the only satisfying story uh, story arc ending in the entire season, but it was good. Did you watch how many? Did you watch it once or twice? I watched it uh, once and a half. I watched the first, <laughs> first time all the way through, then I watched the the second half twice the other time. The only reason I ask is I, I watched it twice, mm -hmm. and. I had it was I had more joy watching it the second time than I did the first because he kind of knew I felt I, I felt betrayed I, I I was I Lana hooked me she hooked me at the very you know I didn't ex I, I thought she was even going to shoot herself in the chest with you know with John, when Johnny had the gun to her and he brought the gun down I thought she was going to shoot herself still and I didn't know she was going to turn it around I'm such a sucker I I, I I think I after we know that she shot Threadson. I saw it, she, once it got down to just her and him in the room, and she indicated to him that she knew he was there, and she was, like, basically, she was basically, like, saying, come in, I'm ready for you. I was like, there is no way this is going down without her, like, getting rid of him, because he's the last piece to her mm -hmm. puzzle, and, and she, I feel like she wouldn't feel that her story is complete without getting rid of him. How did you uh, how did you like the composition of the scene and all the similarities between that scene and the scene between her and Threadson, the final scene with Threadson, with the pouring the drink, going to the bar, talking like they're in control, like it's all taken care of, and then yeah, like I mean, it was it was interesting because she, she used the same tactic that she used on Threadson when she was tied to the bed, calling him baby and using the words like that. She basically treated him like she like he was Threadson. She knew exactly how to do that, and part of it is because she says that she knows, she now knows the psychology of of basically, like, insane men. Mm -hmm. And so I think that part of it is just she really has learned the psychology. And um, there was, a, did she compare herself to Truman Capote, or did I make that up? No, Ryan Murphy did. Ryan Murphy did, okay. Yeah. He said he based it after uh, Truman Capote and actually the writer of The Valley of the Dolls. Yes, uh, and Jacqueline Suzanne. Thank you, Jacqueline Suzanne. Thank you. Yeah. That's a that's a bizarre and interesting juxtaposition. Yeah, that's that was his that was his vision when he saw uh, Lana. So, it was oh gosh, Lana. But what do you think of like her comment where she basically she made that Heath Ledger comment where she said, um, oh, what did she? Oh, she said that you're you're turning psychos into heroes by by making them like by giving them media, and she didn't want to talk about him. I was online, and people were talking about that being another clue for season three. I don't see that, but... I do. Do and you? And here's why. is because Ryan Murphy hinted that the villain is going to be 
I think the villain is going to be Jessica Lange because he seems to hint that the villain is going to be some like big epic like celebrity type villain. Mm -hmm. And and I I think that might be a clue because when you think of the Joker, you think of a big epic celebrity type villain that people always want to dress up like and behave like. Mm -hmm. And so I think maybe it will be exploring like the celebrity of villainy. That's a good okay, good point. You you're going to make me watch it a third time. Fantastic. Gosh. <laughs> Jackie, good to have you back. You're pulling us out of my ass. <laughs> we have missed you. <laughs> I missed you guys. What do you think on that, Stephen? Do you agree with um, with Jackie on that? You know, I can't really make a decision as to that right now. I, I would love to definitely see Jessica Lange as a villain, though. But because we had uh, we, the first season, we had Kit kind of as like one of the main villains. I mean, per se, he was a very disgruntled youth mm -hmm. villain. But then seeing him as like the perfect bad guy or the perfect good guy this season, I would I would enjoy seeing Jessica Lange as a villain. But I don't know. I mean, I could I could see some other people as some pretty devious villains. I'm trying to find the quote that Sister Jude gave gave Lan at the very end to justify her whole arc. Because Jackie, you had something on it as well, didn't you? Yes, it? they. Um, so she says. What did you say? Oh, if you look in the face of evil, evil's gonna look right back at you. That's basically it's a paraphrase of a Nietzsche. Somebody some people pronounce it Nietzsche. Nietzsche, I say Nietzsche, maybe I'm wrong, I don't know. But um a quote that basically is uh battle not with monsters lest you become one. If you look into the abyss, the abyss gazes into you. So I think that means like if you battle with evil, you be you become a little bit evil. Mm -hmm. And so I think that that she's basically warning her and she has someone as someone who has already kind of looked into evil and she had a checkered pass and then turned around. Mm -hmm. She's basically trying to tell her if you're going to dance with the devil, like you you run the risk of becoming evil. And that directly references the fact that she just she in her life has shot two people and like basically in cold blood not like they they weren't actually attacking her when she shot them Correct. which i'm not justifying like hey if i was in the same situation i would probably do the same thing knowing that they're murderers they're probably going to eventually kill you anyway but she essentially killed two people in cold blood by the end of her life like she shot him point blank in the face like no distance that like now is she going to write a book telling that story now? probably Probably, like I think oh, that. Um, I, th I think. Oh, sorry, Stephen. Go ahead. I think no, no, I said with you. most likely. Oh, I think that another reason why, and this goes into another reason why I hear that people were confused was a lot of people. There's a lot of allusions in her story to what is the truth and what isn't the truth because she admits to lying about um, going back to get Jude and and she admits to fabricating pieces of her story. And so people, when they got to the end, they were like, well, does this mean this was all create, all fabricated in her head? Or does it mean, um, or does it mean that parts of it are true and parts of it aren't? I think that what we see is what we get, but that's just my personal thing because I feel that each time that they've shown something wrong, they've then shown the corrected scene. Mm -hmm. Like when she lies to uh, Johnny, her son, and she says, how could I not recognize my own son? They immediately quick cut to the scene where we know that she's already seen a picture of him previously. Right. So she didn't recognize him outright. She recognized him because the police came to her. I was going to ask you about that scene. What, I, I got dizzy. Oh, no, right? Why, was there a reason why he shot that underneath the table like that? He just, or he was upside down on the shot stylistically, Rejon, when he did that scene? I, I feel it's because, um, it's because she was getting vertigo at that point because she figured that there's no problems. My son is gone. Like, I've, I've made peace with myself. I made peace with my life. I have this new life. And here it is. It's like the entire bloody face story has just resurfaced again. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, I feel like that scene is shot that way because basically for her world is literally turned upside down. So she's getting like vertigo at that point. And that, I think, is the point where she starts to make the decision where if I come face to face with this guy, this is what I'm going to do. So that was the instant. Yeah. You know, and briefly, should we talk about were you guys surprised on the beginning of the episode with Johnny, Leo and Teresa? That he was the actual person that chopped off the arm. Steven and I, we talked about it last week that somehow we thought that Bloody Face was going to end up stuck at Briarcliff. That was kind of like our prediction. 
Yeah, we kind of thought it was a little bit more supernatural than him just having a big-ass machete and mm. chopping off uh, Adam Levine's arm. But, I mean, I guess it makes sense. It's just kind of like it was such a... Uh, like a ho-hum moment? <laughs> yeah, I mean, he he has the mask already at that point, and then he kills... He obviously kills the three people who entered the asylum, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like the three cops. So, I mean, it's just kind of... I mean, it's interesting. I just don't know why I was still there when the three when the three burglars got there. I think that scene was a lot of, like, juxtaposing past and present. I found that part fascinating yeah. because we now, we're so accustomed to the asylum as it was in the 60s. So we're used to seeing the different rooms, like the bath, the room with the baths and the spiral staircase and everything. Mm-hmm. And in the scenes that were shot, the first scene you see with Adam Levine and Jenna Tatum's characters you don't really see too much of the asylum because it's so, like, shaky and, like, mm-hmm. very dark. And now you're actually getting to see, like, oh, my gosh, this is the wide shot of, like, the decaying asylum. So this is the first time, for me, that was really fascinating because this is the first time where we see a good present image of the asylum, and it's through his eyes. It's true. Wow. Okay. It's, I, yeah, see, this is why I love you, too, <laughs> on the point, because I was just like, okay, yeah, we knew his bloody face. He chops off the arm. Move on. I, I want resolutions. I want... I just, I was in love with Lana. Lana stole the show for me this episode. I'm sorry. Everyone else was an afterthought. Even even Jude, even, I don't know if we if we should even move on to Jude and Kit. Yeah, I mean, we can we should briefly mention them. I think, I, I love Lana because Lana's the ultimate hero here, essentially. Mm-hmm. But Jude is, is that Jude and Kit both get redemption, you know, because Kit was, um, Kit, they thought Kit was bloody face at first, and so Kit gets his redemption early on when they right. find out he's not bloody face and he gets to be get married and live happily with his children. And then she also gets redemption because she lives the last couple years of her life in happiness, thanks to the children being super genius alien buddies. <laughs> and... Uh, um, and she gets, I love the angel of death. Frances Conroy is oh the angel of death. One of my favorite characters of all time. Her wings, poof, love it. That scene between the angel of death and Jude, I I cried. Mm-hmm. That's one of the best scenes ever. It felt like the close of the second act to a play. Yeah. Where the lights went down and it's just that it's spotlight. Very on angels chin. in America is what it like reminded me of. Yes. Yeah. What'd you think, Stephen? What's going on? What'd you think of, of Dark Angel and Lana's end? I mean, I like I like how they used her in the room and everything. And they've been playing this, and the way she says we've been playing this dance for a while now. With Sister Jude is uh, starts bleeding while she's dancing, and they always have like the whole her doing her little music number, and her her life is a dance basically, and that's the that's the final steps, and then she gets taken out. Um, I actually. Uh, want to say something what is kind of overlooked a bit and this is going back to uh to johnny but what we kind of overlook and there might be more meaning behind is his crack pipe yes oh my gosh i totally forgot about that Dude, he's smoking a crack we pipe him, we see him smoking a crack pipe in his car in the last episode where it cuts between kit driving away and then going back to the present where he's going in to find the book of maniac mm-hmm and we see him smoking his crack pipe then, and then we see him smoking his crack pipe with uh, sitting in the cell where he's about to ch- uh, chop off Maroon's arm. And I'm wondering, is that a clue into next season? Like, is that a, is that a clue into what's going on in next season, or is that just more face of evil stuff in this season that we're just kind of missing a link between that and some other things going on? Superpower, drug dealing, yeah. DC... I don't know. I don't know. Um, that might be a clue because it seems I, – I I actually like that point because it might be a clue because it seems so random to have – like they don't really – they don't really touch on drugs at all except for the drugs that they're feeding them at the asylum. Right. So the implication is everybody here is just nuts, you we- know, and so he's the only person who's like personally, forcefully like choosing to alter his mind. We have a fan saying that Ryan did tweet that there's going to be three different clues hmm. to this episode. So we've DC, got DC, crack pipe, a super queen, uh-huh. like superhero, hmm. superhero villain, super villain. I never, I, I didn't even think of the crack pipe. 
I was too busy looking at. Good lord. It was such a small thing, though, because it's like, it. I think also though our associations with like. People that are people that are bad are often going to be doing like hard drugs. Mm -hmm. In like a lot of villains that you see will be like, oh, this villain is crazy because they're doing drugs. So it's uh, like it's like a knee jerk reaction almost. Okay, so I'm keeping a tab. We got we got red room, crack pipe, and what about Jude with the broom when she was chasing the kids with the broom? Because oh. remember, a lot of people are saying it's witchcraft. Yeah. And Ooh, I would like witchcraft. Last 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 episode, they were quoting the Crucible. Oh. So, oh, yeah. And they were at a cafe on, it, it was a cafe that's in Salem. That, that is, no, it's Boylston Cafe, which is located in the city of Salem, Massachusetts. Hmm. It keeps coming, folks. Crack pipe witches. <laughs> You're hearing it here first. Okay. Um, and I got to, this, this might be a wild goose chase I'm just thinking of right now. Um, Lana knows, does Lana know about the aliens? I don't think so. So she didn't write about anything about the aliens, because I don't think so. Or she and she didn't write about. Uh, she wrote about Kit's disappearance, though, of course, didn't she? I don't. No, I don't when, think so. When she was in the interview, because I don't think she knew that he disappeared. Because wasn't well, she said he disappeared. Oh, she did. That's right. Yeah, she did say he disappeared. No rhyme, no reason. Oh, at the end, yes. Right. Yeah. I, I was thinking of his I previous know, alien. No fans. It'd be are, interesting if. Uh, it'd be interesting if. Looking at John Johnny's character and his crack pipe, if if through reading all the works of his mother Lana Winters, he's basically just imagining what's going on in the asylum through this time through his mind high on crack, and that's what we're seeing in the story, just through her stories, and the aliens are the way of dealing with something that there's no information for him to understand. That's also fascinating. I think, see, but here's my problem with the aliens. They made them look real. So, like, I don't know. Well, I don't know. Okay. No, exactly, exactly. The aliens are his way of, like, when there's, when there's pieces that don't fit together, mm -hmm. like uh, Alma coming back or whatever, he, he would imagine the aliens, if he imagined them real in his story, as a way to deal with what his mind does not comprehend and can't because it's not written in Lana's book. Okay, I can see that. I can see that. You know, and something that we didn't, uh, we haven't touched upon with, 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 not with Lana, but with Jude's character, she was infertile. And, oh, yeah, yeah. And the, the last six months she got to spend being a nana. Being a nana. And she know? loved it. And she told those little kids, like, don't eat your boogers or whatever it was. No. She, <laughs> You're like, that, that was my takeaway. <laughs> Girl, I don't know what's wrong with your DVR, but she did not say that. No, she actually, what did she tell them? She, she told she, the little girl to not let boys, like, treat her bad. Exactly. But what did she, she tell the little boy? She's equal to any man. Mm -hmm. They can never put her down. She's not worth more than, she's not worth less than she knows she is. And they told the kid to not pick his nose. No, See, the she, eat the boogers thing came in somewhere. <laughs> she told the boy to do something you love for no, you know, don't look at it for the amount of money, but do it, do something that you love. Right. I think oh, yeah. she she actually was one of my favorite characters because I think that now that we've gotten to the end of the season and we've seen the way she's interacted with the children and we've seen how like sad and depraved her life was before, even though she did, even though she didn't mean things like cane people and things like that, I think. I think a lot of, a lot of her, like she. I think she was truly good inside, though. Absolutely. And that's why you know that's why the angel of death, because the angel of death is like, I see it as the like good foil to the devil. Mm -hmm. So the angel of death come is the she's the only person the angel of death comes for who's died in the end in this like whole end thing. Mm -hmm. So I think that. Um, she is, she is like she's truly because she's trying to be good she's she shows like human redemption she really is and she when she has her interaction with um lena at the end she's i see her saying as i don't think we'll ever meet again as being like our paths are very different because notice she was very like she was a singer she was already quasi like famous or mm -hmm. on that road and then completely changed her life around versus Lena who went from a nobody to try to be famous who start she she always had Bri Briarcliff what was it in the rearview mirror mm -hmm. always and, and that's yeah. just a metaphor for everything she did in life she was always thinking of the next step always yes. what was the bigger and better thing but yeah um now with Jude um final thought with Jude 
is I agree with you. She was absolutely. I think she was a. She was deep down inside. She was good. She was just passionate in what she believed in. Right. That that's it. There, I don't think she was. She got power hungry. Sure. Right. In the first half of the season, you know, torture and things mm -hmm. like that. I'm sure you know, that's not going to win you any points in heaven. But ultimately, she was. She was a good character. Very different from Constance. I think. Oh yes, a world <laughs> of different. But I think this is our storytellers basically saying, you know. Religion can be misguided as as in like the, there are certain religious practices that people do and people have and people stick to that can become very misguided and it can be corrupt like we see with the cardinal. But there are some people that become a part of religion or join a religion to really better themselves. And I think she was one of those people where certain aspects of the religion made her misguided. But she really, like in the Anne Frank story, she really listened to Anne Frank. She really, um, she eventually listens to Kit at the end. I, I think that the message to take away is that, like, not all religion is bad, but it can be misguided. Mm hmm Absolutely agree. I, once again, a beautiful performance by Jessica Lange. But, you know, you brought up the Cardinal. Oh, yeah. The, we yeah. Got, he was just kind of like... <laughs> okay, okay, it's funny that you said it that way, because was it lazy with him just committing suicide, just like Arden? Arden killed himself. <laughs> Thank you, Stephen. You, okay, Stephen, yeah, okay, so what do you think about the Cardinal slicing and dicing himself? Total cop-out. Total just F you to the audience, honestly, with the character that has been the ambition of the of the series to just go out without even a word. But isn't that consistent uh, with the character of who he was? He was always kind of a weasel if you if you really break it down. He was caught he, he had was no a weasel, but he's not someone I didn't see him as someone who'd have the balls to kill himself. Hmm. Like I, he's he, he was on a cross for Christ's sake. Mm-hmm. I agree with you, but here's here's the here's one of the inherent problems I had with the season is that you I've, I've always said this it had too many characters it was becoming unwieldy and I think in some respects you know you have people creating a story and they keep introducing new characters and some of it's just like thinking of ways to deal with them if they become problematic and I think for him the, he was an afterthought. They realized, oh, we didn't finish up his story, and then they just cheated him of of what should have been a better ending. Do you see? Uh, hey guys, let's, just, let's let's make some bloody bath water and let's throw uh, throw Tim in there, and let's just take an over the head shot and throw that in the episode. It's just, I don't know. There's so many times where there's like great characters, and you're right. They put too many great characters in one thing, and then they just had to kill them off too soon. And like Shelley, I, I really liked Shelley. <laughs> She died, like, <laughs> with, like, basically almost no warning. It was just like, oh, she's crawling out, and now they find her, and then she's dead because or the, of the car. Or the end of Pepper. I yeah. That was the yeah, worst the ending of Pepper. of Pepper. Of course, yeah. They just killed her off. No no explanation for that and her relationship with the aliens. I would have I liked to see the story go in a different direction around the time he was crucified. I'd say... Well, when he was crucified, I think he should have been possessed by Eunice. I think that would have been a great little twist. I agree. Then he has mm. stigmata. He's a downed priest, and he's gotten his path to stardom through that a little bit. A la I fallen. think that would have been a better way to go. We would I, think, I think that would have been a good ending. We would have needed 16 episodes, though. Well, no, he could have just walk off with sing, whistling time is on my side, and we would have gotten it. <laughs> nice. <laughs> good call. No, I would... I would have seen I would have seen in that episode Eunice come in and see the see uh, see Monsignor on the cross. Uh, she would kill Emerson, slice Eunice's own throat, and then possess the Monsignor. I I, I actually would have agreed with that. I think that, and I think that's a, a, a lot of. I think that, well. Ryan Murphy said in an interview that he felt that this episode tied up things. And I think the writers, as I said earlier, tried to tie up the best that they could. But, like, with stories like you, like you said, they have so many characters that it's hard to tie it up. And then there were still some that were just left to the wind, like the creepy little girl. What happened? Whatever happened to that? Ian Did McShane. I just wanted to see him come back. <laughs> I know. Ian McShane kind of got a shitty death, too. It was just like, oh, I'm repenting. Oh, just kidding. Like, 
No, he didn't die. <laughs> you know, he's not. He didn't oh, die. yeah, he ran off and never came back. That's right. He ran yeah, off and never came back. They mentioned him. They mentioned him. When did they mention him? Last episode. They mentioned uh, was it last or two episodes? about Ian McShane. He killed uh, Ken Nunn and became known as the Christmas killer or something. See, he should have just, like... Oh, there I, should have been a whole, like, bloody death scene. And it's okay, because Ryan Murphy can make it up to him next season, because hopefully he will come back. Ooh, Ian McShane. I would, would love, love that. to have Ian McShane. I would love that. Well, I'm but, oh, you know, the bug. Did they ever reference the bug again? Thank you. That was one of the questions nope. I wrote down. What happened to the bug? The, the chip. <laughs> Silence. <laughs> dot, dot, dot. If, if you guys on chat roll, if you guys know, if anyone knows where did this, what happened to the bug, the little alien bug come, that came out of Kit's throat, please let us yeah, know. Yeah, there were too many. I feel that there are still, because they introduced, they, you have the, the beauty of having a small space mm -hmm. and like constraining your characters. Why would you just then pull out these like, oh, we have this random person who we've been having in solitary confinement the whole time. Let's have him show up. It just seems like you can do a lot with with a short amount of characters without having to introduce new things like the creepy girl. Like as much as I loved Ian McShane, creepy Santa. Um, they did uh, it last season. I know. You know, but yeah. maybe it, it, it seemed like the writers. Instead of using their, instead of being creative with the characters they had, and being MacGyver, you know, using what you have to make something brilliant, I they like just that. kept adding to the soup to try to make it better, and it just made it worse. Yeah, okay. I like that. And there was, I mean, there were some storylines that I really loved, obviously, but then there are some that you're just like, whatever happened to that, and why didn't they address it? And why, like, the other thing I want to know is why Kit. Like, why is Kit the magic baby-bearing messiah, and then he gets to go back up to, like, alien heaven? Why, like, why him? Is he better than everybody else? Like, and what? that's a great question. That's what people were asking in the chat roll. Why did the aliens take Kit? What was the deal with that? Why? I mean, he's a good guy, but it's not like, it's not like he's, like... I mean, does that mean every good guy's gonna, you know, be... That's what I mean. This is Steven's last episode. We will not see him after tonight. You know, he's going to be abducted by aliens, possibly. <laughs> I think that could be it. It's because you're a good guy, Steven. It was a compliment. Maybe I've already been abducted by aliens, and I'm talking to you from their spaceship right now. Oh. So there we go. We're Are you impregnating there. two wives right now, though? I don't know. I think, <laughs> I think we're, we're probably missing something with Kit between the, uh, between the relationship he had with a different colored person, just because the aliens were experimenting on babies, and that could be, like, something, you know. Mm-hmm. Like they hadn't, they hadn't experimented on somebody who had been with somebody who's of the different race. I don't know, something like that. See, we uh, have so we, oh. for this season in general. I would probably give it about a six out of ten. Ooh, ouch! But see, I would give the last, like the last episode was my favorite because I can see. I love that the episode itself could have been a contained story. Mm -hmm. I mean, you could have watched the last episode and kind of gotten everything. Yeah, actually, yes. You didn't need to know about the other stuff. Kudos, so we could have saved 12 episodes. <laughs> but so, so see, we have so many questions just off of that topic. Well, the next question is, if these storylines were so hard to juggle, should they really do a story in three cities next season? Uh, I don't think so, but unless... It's going to be three. Yeah. He, he said it's going to be in three cities. Unless it's like three different time zones. I don't know. What do you think about, Ste uh, about that, Stephen? They're trying, they're trying to... They're trying to once upon a time it. <laughs> Don't watch that one, sorry. Oh uh, well, the, once upon a time they keep being. It's the same thing. It's the only difference is uh, once upon they a time like it is so cheesy. Yeah, and and once upon a time is so cheesy that you're just you just kind of like buy into the like general level of cheesiness. That's the theme for once upon a time. Oh. <laughs> but yeah, just, yeah, they just keep adding characters basically. Okay. Okay, good to if know. If they take their lesson from this season and just try to be smart about how they use the characters and actually think about when adding a character in, do we need this character or can we do this with what we have, then it will be a good season. I don't think three cities is going to matter. I don't think the number of locations matters as much as just the talent, which, of course, they have amazing talent, but the writers just need to step up their game and not be stupid. Yeah, well, this is the problem when 
you know, they keep getting renewed and they get a lot of, not that they keep getting renewed is a problem. I mean to say that your budget gets bigger. And so when your budget gets bigger, you say, oh, I can add all these like glorious things. Well, that's not necessarily like adding more isn't always better. Coco Chanel said you should always take one thing off before you go out. Don't over, really? To, like as in a don't, like don't over accessorize. Is this, is this America's Next Top Model? No, this is an <laughs> American Horror Story. You're, no, I'm just so when I go out in a uh, one piece, I should just take that off and go out naked? Yes. Okay, you guys have brought me up to something and I'm gonna tweet it out to the fans. I'll send it to y'all too as well. And it's basically the meeting for the pitch for season two. This is how it went down. Uh -huh. So there's this trip down insane asylum. Only the sick of the sick end up here. It's run by a church to make it creepier, and we've added nun nuns and the such. Head writer. Also, we've got this average nice guy with a girlfriend. Makes her black to stress that he's a good guy. That being the 60s, that, that's a biggie. <laughs> and the nice guy ends up in the asylum, though he doesn't belong. Studio is like, how does that happen? And so on and so forth. And it just explains it all just for you with the big budget. So I'll post that for you guys later for sure. That's but awesome. I'm trying to think any other questions we might have. Any? What, okay, we've, we've, we've loved it. We've hated it. What were your favorite parts of, of season two? Uh, like I said, the Anne Frank story. I, I I love historical references, which is why if they do a big DC historical reference, I'll like that too. I liked, um, of course, the last episode. I think um, just one or two things. I, well, I think Lena and Jude's storylines were my favorite because I do like that they brought these powerful women and they are very different people, but they're they both still end up being very powerful women in their different veins. What about you, Stephen? What was your favorite? What did you? Di what was your favorite part and least favorite part of the season? Uh, my favorite part was probably the whole arc with Eunice, while she was just basically causing mayhem and being low key. I loved I loved <laughs> Eunice's character, um, and I loved the fact that so much random stuff was happening every time that I was just hoping that they'd bring some teenage mutant ninja turtles into it because anything could happen literally with how they were writing. <laughs> So uh, gullible. They could they could hang Teenage Mutant Ninja Christmas ornaments on the tree with the fake teeth, which oh. I will never get out of my head. Never. What's, that yeah, is cemented last, in my memory. Uh, last reporter name was April. I mean, there you go. I mean, mm -hmm. we could we could start this these hint wars for next season. But uh, least favorite part: killing killing Eunice and Arden in the same episode. Hmm. No, no, I agree with you. I, I, yeah, I didn't see them both dying that often. But that didn't episode. they die together as like devil lovers? I saw it as like a Romeo and Juliet, like. God, how twisted that is. Together. I don't know you. Good lord, that's twisted, Jackie. No, but I like, I'm just I, saying though. But I like, like it. I like they're it. They're both basically mm -hmm. like satanic. They die by fire, like, but they were like obsessed with each other. So, I mean, it's like. Where were you week nine? We needed to know this. This my is. Car was broken. <laughs> yeah, so Yeah, where was our where was our female voice all season, Jackie? Yeah, I'm we'll, sorry. We'll have you I have failed you all. There. I have failed you all. Well, I think that pretty much ties up our feelings and our lack of feelings towards season two. So let's move on to maybe some yes. you think, news and gossip. What do you got for us, Jackie? Well, TV news. some of it I already said is going to be shot. Season three is going to be shot in three cities. We talked about the um, clues that we think Jessica Lang um, has her pick, basically, of who's going to work with her, which... Uh, must be nice. Anyway, so it's already confirmed. Sarah Paulson, Evan Peters, and Tysa. How do you say her name? Tysa uh, Formiga. Tysa Formiga. Yeah. yeah. Um, they'll already be back. He said it's going to be evil glamour and something funnier. Um, and that was. I mean, that's pretty much all he's said so far. Everything else is on lockdown, as far as I know. I did hear that he's already he's he's narrowed it down to six different one-word titles for next season. You know how this season was oh, Asylum. Oh yes. Yeah. So he, I don't know what would be a good. Well, we don't know what it's about. I, I mean, know that's the whole. Like American Horror Story season three Ouija. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Season three Ouija. <laughs> I don't know. No. So. It could be crack pipe, but that's two words. All right. So. <laughs> I'd say maybe maybe American Horror Story season three gumbo. Gumbo. Ooh, I like that. There we go. All right. So we kept it short with the news and gossip, but let's move on to then predictions. 
What do we think? Now, see, I mean, you're after Buzz. No TV. topic. I mean, no scenario could be off, too off the wall, as we can see from yeah. this season with aliens and nuns and devils and. I will say I like that American Horror Story. I like that it pushes boundaries. Like I like that it tries new things, and I think that as much as I might not like something here or there, I respect any show that's going to say, "Okay, let's let's go where no show has gone before. Let's try that. Let's let's see how it works on television." And I think that. I think that the reason they're getting renewed and the reason that they're um, that they're still around is because they're gonna they're gonna keep doing it. They're just gonna keep pushing boundaries, and I'm I'm excited to see that maybe they'll work out some kinks. Mm -hmm. I don't know. I think so. You know, I agree. Yeah. Steve, what do you see for off the wall prediction? Come on, I'm telling you, hey, Steve, you, you're gonna have something good for me. Okay. Um. Honestly, I think we're gonna go back in time, of course, to around. New Orleans, that kind of area. We're going to see a big steamboat, steamboat kind of setting. We'll mm -hmm. probably definitely see Zachary Quinto and one of those rich white man things. We'll probably see some slavery to a point. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I don't know. It's, it's going to be interesting. I, I could see they've been playing with special effects a lot this season. So I'd see maybe some summoning of demons, some spell casting, things like that. Mm -hmm. And I think we'll see that actor who got his hand sliced when the Angel of Death made her appearance. In the Angel of... Oh, okay, okay, yes. oh, that's right. Oh, I love the Angel of Death. I hope there's more, like... I, like you, I really liked the supernatural element in season one, and mm -hmm. I hope they do... Like, I, I love the idea of witchcraft. I And I think the the visuals for Supernatural, you can make them so rich because you don't have to confine them to the normal world. And I think that I'm hoping for some of that. Um, tweet us and let us know if you like yeah. season one or two better. That would be great. Yeah, let us know because I know it's split down the middle. I think I've got an idea. Mm -hmm. All right, in season and see episode eight or nine, when they when they went to the jukebox, mm -hmm. of course the record they played was Congress. Oh, yeah. It's it's going to be a political theme, mm -hmm. and that's why they've taught the Kennedy Center Honors, mm -hmm. Washington D.C. the Red Room, mm -hmm. and it's going to deal with politics and government because. That's what's topical and it's going on nowadays. Mm -hmm. But I think it's you. You said it. You you solidified my theory when you were giving your theory about next season, and that is that he really wants to push the boundaries. So why not question the government right now? This season was about the mental mental care her, uh, mental health system. Mm -hmm. So I get that all out. And this season, I, I mean, this upcoming season, I really think he's going to attack, like, conspiracy theories. He's going to attack possibly the Bilderberg Group. We're going to talk about one world government. I like, like that. Political, powerful families that are involved in, like, these skull and bones. And they use witch witchcraft. And it's, you know, like those theories. He's really I gonna, think that's a great idea. He's really going to push that. So I vote for you in the writer's room. <laughs> <laughs> and it'll take that would, place. That would be fairly interesting. I'd like to see, like, old school counterfeiting kind of going on maybe. Yeah, but um, I think it'll be present or day. Or yeah, we, uh, yeah, we, we, we said carnival quite a bit, right? Because we still, I, I still have a feeling something with New Orleans. I'm feeling New Orleans, D.C. New Orleans has a very, well, I'm, I'm not pointing to New Orleans now, but historically, New Orleans is known for having a very corrupt government. So... Yeah. So, so we're talking like Governor Bobby Jindal and stuff and things like that. I'm not. I'm not shitting on Jindal, but I'm just saying <laughs> that like in the past, New Orleans has known for having a very corrupt government. Like the mayor that was just indicted. See, so that's some food for thought, guys. That, those are just theories. So I think that's about it. Any final oh, thoughts? Ryan Murphy said, "No more aliens, people. No more." Thank yeah. you. <laughs> <laughs> I, th I think we're all gonna give you an applause for that. Here's Thank one more. One more prediction. Um, I think that no matter how good or bad season three is, every random person and their dog is going to keep saying that Ryan Murphy is brilliant, no matter what. Okay. <laughs> what was that? I wasn't sure if that was like a statement of judgment or if that was just a statement. I'm just, I'm just joking. Please remember to rate <laughs> us on no iTunes, especially after that does, statement. Everyone just calls it brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. We're going to end on a high note? <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is a sh better show than Glee right now. Oh, no. Love you guys. <laughs> Love you. Steven, thank you for sticking Remember, around. Steven is high on meds. That's right. The opinions expressed by Stephen Lemieux did not necessarily reflect those of AfterBuzz nor its subsidiaries. Thank you. All right. I'll, I'll buzz you guys later, and thank you for tuning in all season for me and JC and David Skifalidi and Jackie Borowski. Bye. Th thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you, guys.
All right, that's it for us. We're getting a hook. All right, so Martin, thank you. Take us out. Where can, where can they find you, Martin, since we didn't even talk to you all episode? Martin Valle is on Instagram. V-A-L-L-E-S. <laughs> what about Jackie? Want to continue the conversation with you? Where can they find you? I'm at 123Jackie, J-A-C-Q-U-E underscore B. And I'm really interested in hearing everyone's perspectives on us, so please. Absolutely. I'll remember to tweet some of those links I was telling you throughout the episode. You can find me at The Everyday Man. You can find all of us at After Buzz TV. So for Jackie, Steven, Martin, I'm JC. We'll see you next season. And From David. Bing.com, executive producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz, Buzz you later. later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.